What's up, Kingdom? This character is most broken character in Baldur's Gate 3. What are you doing, Cap? You can easily use him as solo character to defeat Honor mod, and also combine with good party to basically carry this party through the whole game. You can play him as main character, you can respect your party members into this character, and there's of course Sword Bard multiclass. So let me show you a full build. This build comes in line pretty fast, and when you create a character, you start in as Bard. One very important part. Your race should be proficient with long bows. But don't worry if your race is not proficient with long bows, you can switch into Bard when you're multiclassing. So then instead start as Paladin. That's very important information, but it won't affect final build by any means. Because Bard and Paladin kinda using same attributes. So what Paladin we choose? I will show you Paladin version because right now my race is not familiar with long bows. When you're choosing Paladin, go with Oath of Vengeance. And this will be your starting stat distribution. You want 16 Strength, 16 Dexterity, 14 Constitution and 12 Charisma. That's how you start your game and basically you can play with these stats. But if you're respecting your character into the late game into this build, if you want like really broken character to finish the game and you got access to best amulets, gloves and other stuff, then you want to respect your character a little bit differently. Instead, you want 17 Dexterity, 14 Constitution, 10 Intelligence, 10 Wisdom and 10 Charisma. So, let's go! Our first leveling pattern will be 2 levels of Paladin and then 5 levels of Bard. And vice versa. If you started as Bard, then go with 5 levels as Bard and then get 2 levels of Paladin. So on second level, you can pick your fighting style. And as Paladin, just go with defense. It will give you more armor class and also you will have additional prepared spells. You don't care about spells as Paladin because you won't use them a lot. You don't have a lot of spell slots and, mo and most spell slots will be used by using Divine Smite. And now it's time to switch to Bard, so let me explain what you want to do as Bard. When you're picking your cantrips, well, you can use Vicious Mockery, you will be playing Swords Bard and Swords Bard using weapons to destroy his enemies, not bad words like Vicious Mockery. So you want to get Minor Illusion and Light. That's very useful cantrips for you, I will explain how to use them in a second. First of all, let's find out what spells we want to prepare. And that will be Healing Ward, just in case you need to heal your teammates and pick them up when they downed. Also, a supportive character, probably your party don't have Feather Fall and Long Strider from Mages and Sorcerers, so you can have these abilities. And basically, skills to look for is Sleep, to put enemies into sleep mode, it's useful in early game, but fall off later, you can change the skill later, easily. Tasha's Hydra's Laughter, very powerful disable spell, and Thunder Wave or Fairy Fire. Fairy Fire can be casted on enemies, they won't be able to turn invisible and also you will have advantage on attack rolls against them. I prefer Fairy Fire. Then we can pick starting instrument, it won't affect your playstyle at all, so pick whatever instrument you like, you will hear it from time to time. And that's it, basically a Bard created with same stat distribution, or you just switch to Bard, it doesn't matter. So Bard level 2. You're gaining one more spell, right now I would go with Thunder Wave, it's useful throughout the game when you want to push enemies away from you. And now you can replace spells, so we don't need to replace spells right now, but if you picked Sleep, you can replace Sleep with Tasha's Hydra's Laughter later on in the game. Now Bard level 3, that's where we're picking our subclass of Bard. There's three of them, we're going with College of Sword, that gives us access to different flourishes melee and range flourishes. You can use your bardic inspiration to cast them, so now instead of giving 1d6 to your allies, you're giving 1d6 for your damage. And that's what making bard broken, you got different stuff over here, fighting styles, but there's only dueling and two weapon fighting. I would go with two weapon fighting, but in case you're playing him as solo character to destroy Honor mod, I will show you build with two swords in each hand, but for solo character, I actually recommend going with shield and dueling. Now we can learn spells from level 2, and this will be hold person spell. On Bard level 4, you get an additional cantrip, again, you kinda don't care about these cantrips, you can pick whatever you like, maybe mage hand, 
for some exploration stuff. You get an additional spell from level 2. And you don't need a lot of spells from level 2, but useful spells, it is really useful, can be knock, just in case you need to open some doors, you don't have lockpicks. Most of the time you will have lockpicks. Bard got high dexterity, so he can easily lockpick some stuff. You can get enhanced ability to actually get this like extra chances to lockpick some stuff or invisibility. Again, if you're playing solo, you can like stop relying on your invisibility potions and just cast invisibility just in case you need the spell. So pick whatever you like, it doesn't matter too much. Mostly like focus on utility spells and not just on spells like cloud daggers. You don't need the like damaging spells. You don't need them. So utility stuff will work. And also now you're picking your feet as level 4 Bard. This feat will be Sharpshooter, and yeah, we will be playing with Bow with this build. And now Bard level 5. A Swords Bard, you still need one more level to get double attack at one turn, unlike other fighting classes, but that's totally fine. So if you're playing Swords Bard as your like main character, if you got proficiency with longbows, then you can go to level 6 Bard and then respect into Paladin and get to levels in Paladin. If you're playing as Paladin, then you need to wait until next level, but that's totally fine. At level 5, Bard got improved Bardic Inspiration, so it's now 1d8 instead of 1d6, and access to level 3 spells. So, good spells over here is Hypnotic Pattern, it's really nice one. Ability to hypnotize your enemies is really cool. And now finally level 8, so we get an extra attack and also extra spell. And you can get some like utility stuff like knock for example. So let's see how you can play this boy in a mid game basically and in an early game too. So what this character can do right now in the early game when you're playing as him. You're right now mix of bard and paladin. You get access to a lot of flourishes. So you get melee flourishes and range flourishes. Make sure to get some good medium armor and your armor class will be really high at this point of the game already. So slashing flourish will attack enemies in front of you, basically it's slashing attack. It's least useful attack, because another very cool flourish is defensive flourish. You will attack and increase your armor class by 4, for one turn. And there's mobile flourish. With Mobile Flourish you can push your targets and also you will unlock ability after you're pushing him up to 6 meters to teleport to him. But instead we will basically run away most of the time instead of teleporting. Close part that to all of these attacks you will add additional 1d8 damage because you're using Bardic Inspiration to use these attacks. And same attacks will be with your bow. There's one bow attack called Slashing Flourish and in melee you're just attacking in front of you multiple targets. But with bow you're actually picking two targets and you can pick one and second target and split damage. But actually you can target one creature and do two attacks to one target. Both attacks will be with additional 1d8 damage. And that's why in early game I'm recommending you getting Titan String Bow. It's easy to get, you can get it in Jintarim Holdout from Trader if you finish his quest, or in the Moonrise Towers from Trader, you can buy this bow easily. This bow is Titan weapon, and this weapon deals additional damage equal to your strength modifier. That's why we got high strength in the early game as stats. But instead you can actually dump strength, as I showed you in my second like respect ability distribution, and then just drink potions. For example, elixirs of some strength, you will have around like 22 strength, 21. And now you will add a lot of flat damage to your bow attacks. So just look at this. You will do 1d8 damage from bow, plus one, plus your dexterity modifier, plus sharpshooter, it's flat 10. And also from strength, it will be plus five from your potions, for example. And this will be added to two attacks with slashing flourish. That's insane amount of damage for early game. So if you like make boost attacks, it will be around 60 damage already without critical strikes, 60 damage in one hit. You already can do two hits. So right now you already can do around 120 damage. And guys, believe me, 12, level 12 characters won't have 120 health. So at level 5, level 6, uh, like you won't have any problem. 
I promised you to explain how to use other stuff. So we got healing ward on our panel just to pick up allies that is downed. Also we get light cantrip and how to use light cantrip it's super easy. Get your weapon in your main hand and cast light on yourself. Now your weapon will be lighted up. So it's very useful against guys who fighting in a darkness and you will have advantage against them. I mean not advantage you just remove the advantage from being in shadows and that's really useful stuff and you just light up area around so use minor illusion to just lure enemies to some places they will go and see what's going on and when they come in you can use mobile flourish to push them off the cliffs and do other stuff then we get variety of spells that we can use to disable targets so hold person is insanely powerful stuff it's level 2 spell you can cast it on one target or you can upcast it to level 3 to cast it on two targets at once and that's super cool if you do it because now your target is holded he's paralyzed what does it mean it means that every attack against this target will be critical hit and that's why we're picking paladin so we got this different smites in case our target got protection from radiant energy but most of the time as paladin you want to actually go into your spell book go into reactions and turn on all notifications for smites so you will be asked do you want to use smite on your hit that's super useful i turned on every smite notification and now i can just do normal attack with my weapon with my like normal weapon or even we can do any type of flourish we can do like melee flourish but also we can do our slashing flourish look i will demonstrate you with slashing flourish it's insane so we're using flourish it will already do additional damage and it will be 100 percent critical hit on this holded target we are prompted right now do we want to do a critical strike with smite and we can choose what smite we will use for critical strike but look right now right now we already did 31 damage with this critical strike because on crit we're rolling additional dices from our bonus dice from Bardic Inspiration. So it's already 31 damage. And same will be applied with Divine Smite. So this guy just took additional 5d8 radiant damage. That's not it. We also create like striking second target with Smite. So in one turn basically, in one attack, we can attack two targets, do two Smites and inflict a lot of additional damage to them. And also, if we holded them just before, it will be critical strikes and damage is just insane. That's actually like super crazy stuff. We can wake him up with our healing healing ward. And what we got else? So we got Long Strider. We can cast it on yourself, on our allies. It's a ritual. If you cast it outside of the battle, it will be cast it without consuming spell slots. So we can upcast it and make wall party run fast. Very broken stuff, if you ask me. In case you need to jump from high distance, use Feather Fall. It will give you ability to basically jump without taking any damage. Very useful too. We got some Paladin stuff because Lay of Hand, Lay on Hand charges useful only for Lay on Hands spell. Basically, outside of the battle, you can heal a little bit without consuming any potions and lotions battle. And also, we got this Song of Rest from Bard. So once per long rest, you can use it, and you will instantly heal and benefit from short rest. So it's completely free short rest once per day. Additional short rest that will recharge your bardic inspiration you're already pretty broken character but now it's become even more broken so now character level 9 and instead of continuing with bard we basically got everything we need from bard right now we need one more level in paladin now we are like completely broken and you can be level 9 just when you like finishing act 2 so what you got from level 9 a lot of useless stuff, we can just destroy it from panel instantly, we don't need everything. We need this Wo Enmity. So, gain advantage on attack rolls against an enemy. It uses only bonus actions, so that's already a really good spell. Most of the time, it should be used like you cast it on your boss and you will gain advantage for 10 turns against this boss. That's how it should work, probably. But still, right now, you can cast it on yourself and you will gain advantage on every attack roll against every target for 10 turns. Advantage means your critical strike chance a lot higher, your normal like hit chance a lot higher. 
And because we're using Sharpshooter Alin, that's lowering our chance to hit targets, it's very useful stuff. It's just insanely useful stuff. And also it's recharging on short rest, so basically our play style is super simple at this time. You just enter the battle using all your bardic inspiration for flourishes, destroying your enemies with some spell slots used for maybe spells, maybe smites. Then using Song of Rest, doing it one more time. Of course, every time you cast and wall enmity at the start of the battle with bonus action at first turn. And basically you can do it three, three battles per day, then using Long Crest, and that's it. So easy, straightforward. But what now? Now you actually can go into Paladin to get your feet or get one more level in Bard. There's a lot of cool stuff actually, like greater invisibility from level 4. And then you finally will be Bard level 8. You can get one more spell. There's not a lot of cool spells over here. So pick whatever you like, it doesn't matter. And our feet will be plus 1 dexterity, plus 1 charisma. And now level 12, we're switching back to Paladin. And as Paladin, we want to get ability improvement and get plus 2 to dexterity. So now our dexterity is maximized. That's very important because we will be using this bow throughout the game and this bow got really low enchantment, so we need high hit chance. So, <laughs> final build. What we can do? Let's first of all talk about items. What gear you want? For finishing build, you can go with Critical Strike build, for example, you can go with Serok Horn Helmet to increase Critical Strike chance, also Knife of Under Mountain King with Blade of the First Blood, that's a nice combination to increase your Critical Strike chance and also it uh, will be not Blade of the First Blood, it will be probably like another name or just Orin Blade basically. It will give you armor class in off hand, so pretty useful stuff. For your armor, it will be armor of agility or any other good armor that uses dexterity modifier and adding it to your armor class. Also boots of persistence, just nice medium armor boots. Then let's talk about glove slot. So if you're using potions, then you don't care basically about gloves. You can pick any other gloves I will show you from other combinations. One of the combinations is Rhapsody, which can be looted from Cassador when you fight him and defeat him. So when you defeat Cassador, if you defeat Cassador, maybe you're like his friend. You can get Rhapsody and after you kill like three persons, you will get plus three chances to hit targets. That's nice buff for our bow again. If you don't like to drink in potions, then use Gauntlets of Frost Giant Strength and basically respect your character when you like acquire these gloves because they will give you 23 Ferlet Strength. So only after this point of the game you can respect your character and dump your strength. And another gloves is Legacy of Masters. You will gain plus two to attack and damage rolls. It will increase your damage and chances to hit. So very nice gloves. If you want to hit more often with your bow, but then you need to drink potions. So make sure to like understand what you want to do and how to round up your stats. If you don't want to reduce your critical strike chances, then don't go for Cerebral Helmet. Instead, you can find Mask of Soul Perception. You can find it in Devil's Fee. It will give you plus two bonus to attack rolls and initiative rolls and perception checks. So useful stuff. And also Amulet of Greater Health can be found at the same place where you can find Frost Giant Strength Gauntlets. It will give you like flat high constitution for more health. It's really cool amulet, but you're not forced to use it. You can live fine with 92 health. And also you can like find gauntlets on your way to the act three that giving you additional damage on attack rolls. Not this one, but another like hell dusk gloves, float hell dusk gloves, for example. So just on hit additional damage will be nice too. That's like what to look for. Look for hit chance, hit chance with bow and other stuff like this. So if you're not using Amulet of Greater Strength, you can use this ring and generally combination, Brute Mother Revenge, if you found it in Act 1. That will coat your weapon when you're healing and you will be healed every turn in Act 3 if you buy Ring of Protection. Ring of Regeneration from Sorcery Soundress, sorry. Yeah. And Caustic Band, you can find it in Act 1.5 in Underdark. So there's our character, there's our final build. You will have around 25 armor class with Cloak of Protection. And also when you use your flourishes, you can have up to 29 armor class easily. You will be like untouchable, basically, basically untouchable. 
how to make this character even more broken, you need party members that can cast pass without trace. It's concentration spell until long rest, so basically you're casting this stuff and trying to hide with this ally so he not getting hit. And while you're under the effect of pass without trace, you need to be in the range. And then you can do this combination. You can concentrate on great invisibility by yourself. So just concentrate on this spell. And now you kind of stealth archer with advantage on hit. You can just normally shoot arrows and you never will be like, get out of invisibility. You will <laughs> succeed on stealth checks. You do stuff like this and basically can destroy a lot of enemies just by standing still and attacking with bow in action <laughs> like RPG style, not in turn-based RPG. So that's how you do it. It will look like this, Act 3 enemies, you're just doing slashing flourish and attacking two targets or one target. So this guy got 122 health right now. I'm just shooting my arrow. Look, he took damage. <laughs> what he will do now? He can't do anything, so we just destroyed this bro again. Damage is just insane, we can do like normal attack to not waste all my bardic inspiration and he's done. So fight starts for some reason, again we don't care too much, <laughs> we can be in action like RPG style. Let's use our flourish on this lady, sorry bro you're out basically, yeah she's out. And now for some reason we are in a fight, if you play in solo you can go away and they will switch over here and the fight will be over. But don't worry, right now as you can see we got this awesome ability to do second attack and also wall enmity to gain advantage. So we get in wall enmity, stealth successful, so we're still invisible, we can reposition ourselves really easily. And now let's do some slashing flourish. Okay, this lady will be down, I guess, so I can like split my attacks on different targets. Let's try it. Let's try it out. Yeah, it was easy. Look, he's going here and trying to find me, but he can't because I'm too far away. This lady failing too, like everyone else. And now when everyone staying together trying to find us, you know what we can do? We can do slashing flourish melee on them. Look, with full build we got this stacking additional poison, piercing damage, acid damage, so a lot of additional damage. And let's just make a hit on these unsuspectful guys. So damage is just insanely good. And never forget that we can also Divine Smite on these hits and basically destroy them to ashes, basically. We can attack with two hands, do a lot of additional damage. That's truly impressive and most broken character in the game right now. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And you will have blast playing this bard in Baldur's Gate 3. Go watch other cool videos on the screen right now. And see you in the next videos, guys.